Oh yeah, so what do Taylor Swift and last week's material have in common? Does anybody uh, think they might know what they have in common? Oh, they're both one-dimensional. Oh, ooh, sick and burn. Mm, yeah, so, um, so last week we talked about um, one-dimensional kinematics, right? So hopefully from last week you learned all these topics. Unit conversions was sort of for fun, that fun problem y'all did, which some people didn't find so fun. But we went through and talked about the concepts in calculus and kinematics. We derived, it's really just two equations. It's really just VF equals V naught plus AT, and XF equals XI plus VIT plus 1 F AT squared. That's really all of 1D kinematics, those two equations. If you have constant uniform motion, you set the acceleration to zero. Okay? And then we took those two and made a third one. So hopefully you got a little experience at where those came from, how they're related to calculus, how they're related to each other, and how to plug them in and do problems. And of course, analyzing graphs will be important, so hopefully you got a little experience with that. And then we showed you some of the trickier problems. We didn't quite get to them, I made videos of them, hopefully you found them and helped you do the homework, right? And then there's always this, we can always come up with something out of the blue, yes, 5% of the exam might be out of the blue. Okay, so hopefully that all made sense, so here we go this week. So this week, we're taking it to two dimensions. Oh no, what happened to my system? Oh, it's just on the thing, funny. It's all new, let's see, here we go. So this week we're gonna talk a lot about vectors. I'm gonna spend a whole half lecture on vectors. So if you're uncomfortable with vectors, you'll be more informed about why you're uncomfortable at the end of the, this first half of the lecture. So we're gonna talk all about vectors, how to draw them, what they're all about, how to add them, subtract them, multiply them by a constant, and how to identify them. Notice we're real big on looking at graphs and understanding things graphically. Right? That's gonna continue to be important with vectors. Then the most famous 2D problem is projectiles. We'll spend some time on projectiles, and then we'll do uh, Thursday, we'll do uh, moving reference frames, and we'll just do a bunch of practice problems on Thursday. Okay, so 2D kinematics is what we're moving on to uh, today. Okay, so let me get the lights on here. Did that just happen? Or? No, I don't know. Okay, okay. So vectors. Let's see. All right, so vectors, here we go. Vectors are numbers with metadata, would be your generation's way to think of vectors. It's a number with just a little bit more information attached to it, right? And we always identify them by contrasting them to scalars. These are the numbers from your youth. Before you had to think about vectors, you had scalars. You had your age, right? Your SAT score was a scalar. Your mass is a scalar. Your phone number is a scalar, etc. So those are just simple numbers. Another way to think of them is quantities. Except your phone number, those are all quantities. Uh, then of course vectors are the ones that have the famous definition which is a quantity with a direction. Quantity with a direction associated with it. So we've already talked about them, right? So velocity is a scalar, and acceleration are the ones we've talked about, and displacement, I'm sorry, it's a vector, and displacement, we're all vectors. And you can think of more, right? So force that we're gonna talk about next week is a vector. There's others, I don't know, let's see. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, okay, so let's talk about uh, how to draw vectors, okay? So, uh, this is vector anatomy, and this is actually important, you can mess this up, okay? So if you're gonna draw a vector, it's an arrow. That's all it is. You draw the arrowhead on it, you can draw the feathers on it if you want, I don't recommend it. It'll make your drawings more confusing, right? So it's just an arrow, and the symbol for a vector is you put a hat on it. Symbol has an arrow hat. All right, like that. So you'll see me writing all the time, putting those on there. That's a, that's a little vector above the V to tell you that it's a vector. Or in a book, or bold, right? You might, in a book, you might see, oh, it's bold. It's hard to do on the chalkboard, right? 
books often just make a, a number bold to make it indicate it's a vector, but on a board we give it a hat. Okay? Now the vector is an arrow, and of course it points in the direction of the vector. <coughs> its length is the size of the vector. We'll get more into that mathematically in a minute. Um, but one other thing I want you to know is into the board and out of the board. So we need a way to do a little bit of 3D later. We're not really going to get into this now, but before the semester is over, we'll need to have vectors going in and coming out. And the way you do that is you think of it as an arrow. It is an arrow, right? So if an arrow is coming at you, it's going to hit you right in the face. What do you see? That's coming out of the board. Here comes the arrow. So it looks like this. It's like the point. Right? That's the point of the arrow headed to your face. That's a vector coming out of the board. We won't do it this week, but it'll come eventually. A vector into the board. After you shoot the arrow, what do you see? You see the feathers, right? It's a little X. Those are the feathers going away from you into the board. Okay? So that all sounds not so hard, identifying vectors and directions. But there's one way to make it tricky already. And that is, we're going to eventually talk about tension in a string. So if you took a little physics, you might know that tension is something. Is tension a scalar or a vector? I'll do a one, two, three. And you say scalar or vector. Tension is a one, two, three. Well, that's pretty good. A lot of you did say scalar. It's a scalar. What? Why is it a scalar? So think about it. I meant to bring like a string with something hanging on it. So tension is a scalar. It's a scalar property of a string. And the string applies a force at anything attached to it on the ends. Right? So there's tension and the tension force. Those are actually different. We often just say tension, and we draw a T, and we put a vector on it. That means we mean the tension force. T is the tension. And it kind of makes sense if you think about it. If I just have a string under tension, which way is the force? It's, it's, it's this way or this way. It depends on what it's attached to. It only applies the force at the end. right? So then it applies the tension force here. And if there's another wall here, it applies the tension force there, pulling in. Okay? But the tension itself is a property, a scalar property of the string. So your homework has one other tricky one like that, that. Here's your hint. There's another famous common one that you think of maybe as a vector, but it's really a scalar. Okay? So it's not quite as straightforward as you might think it is. Okay?